you you you're a tcs lifer right okay hello and welcome to business today television i'm siddharth zarabi and with me one of the biggest names in india's it sector rajesh gopinath currently now designated as the advisor uh, for tcs or the outgoing md and c okay that's that's the best uh, first of all uh, best wishes in advance for the next stage of your professional life and your own life thank you very much for your time 2022 rajesh was uh, a very tumultuous year for technology but in the last 6 7 months technology seems to be back and people are talking about how it can transform life and society your thoughts on that subject i think it's absolutely true that uh, the biggest transformations that you're seeing are going to have a very large technology footprint to it so uh, i don't think we uh, when we look back uh, while right now it might think that we are overdoing the whole um, premise the specifics of it will of course evolve but uh, what's ahead of us is likely to be even much more than what we are thinking of currently so that i'm very very sure about um its impact will be transformational its impact will be economy wide society wide and we need to make sure that we are doing it right and uh, you know moving forward with it you are here in your role um, uh, in the G20 and you made a presentation but the question really rajesh if you permit me to ask you is about talent uh, when we look ahead at the transformational changes that are happening india's it has contributed to uh, millions of indians finding gainful employment so if a young uh, it engineer was listening to you and to my question what should he be doing to prepare himself for this transformational future what would you tell him i would say that first of all have no doubt whatsoever because if if it can be learned by someone it can be learned by you and if you learn it you will be on top of it rather than getting uh, submerged by it so you don't have the opportunity to sit out this revolution but if you invest your time and effort to learn the tool sets that are out there you will stay on top of it just as the generation before has done it the specifics of what you will learn will be very different from what we learned but as long as you prepare to learn uh, the opportunities will continue to be tremendous and the growth uh, opportunities are really exciting there is fear about some of these technology changes taking away jobs leading to lesser people uh, in in industry is that fear justified i think it's is justified uh, definitely uh, the jobs that exist today will require lot less people than what they used to do earlier but there will be lot more jobs of tomorrow which we can't envisage currently uh, and that is where the positioning ought to be and those jobs of tomorrow will require two things one is that you need to know the tool sets that are out there so that if you learn the tool sets you will position yourself for the jobs of tomorrow and second is an openness to change that uh, you know rather than being afraid of what is going away uh, you got to be constantly out there looking at what's coming and that openness to change is going to be a key determinant of what's uh, out there and that applies to all of us rajesh as a technology leader thought leader business operations man pick the top 3 trends that you are yourself looking forward to in terms of a uh, new wave of technologies and ai is already spoken about a lot but i leave it to you to pick the top 3 that rajesh gopinath uh, is looking forward to so ai is there right because and it has been spoken about enough so there is nothing further to add <laughs> but i think there's a whole uh, revolution happening in materials and manufacturing uh, 3d manufacturing will completely uh, change the way we approach it and along with 3d manufacturing will come the materials revolution because once you are approaching it with a 3d printing kind of a concept uh, the way you will structure the materials will be very different so the materials revolution is going to be tremendous and it's going to something that yeah uh similar stuff is happening on the biotech side uh we are understanding the human body a lot better than what we did we applied chemistry to it so far and we are realizing the power of uh, both biology as well as thinking of it as an integrated system uh then there is of course space which uh, you know for the last maybe 30 40 years we have not really taken it to the same pace of progress that everything else has progressed with and that seems to be going through an inflection point uh chandrayaan is a fantastic thing for india uh we are also signed up to the artemis uh, mission uh that's really exciting multiple countries going uh, you know a significant new investment so when you think about it 
there is so much new that is out there and that's happening and changing each of these sectors. Uh, absolutely fantastic time for anybody to be new to the workforce, to be learning about things and uh, looking forward to the things that can come. What have you recommended in terms of some of the policy steps and measures that are required at an industry and government level for India to uh, sort of leverage the emerging opportunities? So our recommendations have been uh, across, not just for India, but across multiple countries. Uh, we have got four big recommendations. One is we are saying that uh, uh, universal connectivity should be seen the same way as we look at electricity. That just as we assume that electricity is a critical requirement for any economic progress. And almost like a right. <laughs> almost as a fundamental right, right? Yeah. I mean, we think about development, uh, it being a key indicator of development, connectivity of high quality, uh, of reliable connectivity and future-proofed connectivity because it is going to keep on changing and uh, that is going to be as fundamental. So governments need to take that approach to it and uh, that will require very effective uh, collaboration between government and the private sector and uh, that mindset has to be of that nature. And it is happening in many countries and the countries where it is not, uh, our, we are suggesting that it should be a lot more openness to it because the scale should be of that nature. Uh, second is on skills, uh, the same issue that uh, we need to work towards interoperability of skills to increase uh, the workforce availability and make the workforce inclusive across regions and across communities. And uh, for that, a common minimum standard of digital literacy and uh, cross acceptance of uh, certification of uh, education standards, that's going to be critical so that people know, uh, you know, this is what we need to learn to be employable and it should not matter as to where you are actually acquiring that education, it should be have a common standard. Third is uh, on MSMEs, uh, typically in technology progress, MSMEs have always lagged and it has been a trickle down effect to the MSME. We need to make sure that in digital transformation, we take MSMEs along with us. Uh, so making appropriate finance available to the MSME sector for digital transformation investments. Just as finance is available for physical investments, it should be available for digital investments for the MSME structure. And also making enabling things like the India Digital Stack, um, making sector specific uh, digital toolkits available for the MSME sector across multiple countries is going to be critical. And the fourth area is cyber security that uh, while cyber security, like physical security, end of the day will be a sovereign subject, will be a local subject, but we need to ensure that we try to harmonize the uh, standards around it so that it becomes uh, less cumbersome to comply and more effective from a cyber security perspective. So how do we converge to common minimum standards on cyber security and increase the awareness and the skill availability on cyber security? So these are the four main recommendations that we have. As I let you go, I want to ask you one final question which a lot of our viewers might have in their mind. What's next for Rajesh Gopinathan? <laughs> <laughs> no, that you'll have to watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> we will do that very, very keenly. Uh, Rajesh Gopinathan, all the best and thank you very much for your time with us today. My with that, it's a wrap on this conversation. Uh, we'll be back with more. Do stay tuned in. Bye-bye. Ajib Gulabchand joins us for a quick chat on the B20 Summit. Mr. Gulabchand, thank you so much. Uh